Well, I made a mistake as I was pulling them apart, and unfortunately, I managed to break mine. That goes in the pickup, normally. And see what's missing? You see that the lock switch will no longer actually stay. <laughs> Oops, I broke it. So that is what it's supposed to look like, and that is what it looks like now. So, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> So thankfully I'm able to get this whole darn thing apart because I can actually probably just use this switch as is without the back two buttons and it should work just fine. Because if you notice, it's got the lighting distributor for the rears that it doesn't have. So <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's either that or I figure out how this switch is in here, which honestly it looks like those little twisties in there might just be all that's holding it in. If so, it's possible I could just, you know, untwist them off of this one and untwist them off of this one and swap them. But either way, it doesn't really matter all that much. But what this also tells me is that I can just put in the LEDs into these little bulb holders and just point them straight up because these guys are going to be doing all the distributing. There is no direct route to the switches, except through these. So, that's nice to know. It's very nice to know, because that means I don't have to do anything special, except, of course, put the resistors in the truck itself. Now, with the passenger side switch, on the other hand, it's a little different. All right, so now I just took apart the passenger switch. And as you can see now, that's where the bulb comes in, and then it goes all the way around to the switches. But if you look at it, the bulb is pointing straight up. And the way this thing is designed, it's just going to come straight out of there and go nowhere else. So what I have to do with this one, the same thing I did on my blazer, is point the LED straight into the side of this thing so it's pointing that way basically and then it kind of just distributes from there it works all right i won't say fantastic because it really isn't but it works so that's what i'm gonna have to do with that one but now let me put some switches back together well as it turns out i was right and that is all that's holding these switches in just those tabs so now, this guy just comes out, easily replaced. <laughs> I honestly didn't figure it would be that simple. So now, I can replace them with one of these. And in fact, even the passenger side ones can be stuck in place of the one I just pulled. Because they're all the same. They all even mount the same. That's really cool. Very convenient. I gotta say. <laughs> so now I can still use my original switch, which is great. Probably the hardest part of it all was just getting this piece loose. Because it just didn't want to come loose at all. Cool! Well, I have fixed up my windows and lock switch. So that it not only doesn't fall apart when I move. But it looks pretty darn good too. And this is my original switch. It's just... Not original buttons, and not the original switch for the lock, which is over, well, somewhere around here. <laughs> broken, totally broken, and I accidentally broke a tab off trying to get it loose, so that went pretty well, too. Not really. Don't really care anymore. So, that now has light, and this now has light, as you are about to see. Now, the way this works is there are actually two grounds, but there's only one lighting input. That's pin J right there. This is pin F and pin C. A, B, C, D, E, and uh, A, B, C, D, E, F. There is no G or H pin, and they skip I and go straight to J, and then there's a K pin missing and an L which you can actually see 
this switch has because it has all four doors. C, C, F, G pin is missing in both models and then H, J, K, L. And this one also has an F and G on the power window side. So, yeah. So that's that. So now I'm going to hook her up and we're going to see light. And it's going to be great. So there we go. Ignore these two because they won't exist. And there's the power lock. And the windows. So it doesn't look too dim. It looks pretty good actually. I don't know if it's focusing properly, but hopefully it is. Oh, I lost my power. There we go. Now it's focusing correctly. So there's that. And as you can see, it is distributing that LED very well. <laughs> now, like I said, I can't put this sucker back in my truck until I get that resistor put in the door. But once I get that done, this thing's going to be very well good to go. Oh, look at that. I have another flat LED up in here. A flathead 5 mil. So, yeah, there's that. Now I can do this one and show you what I'm talking about, about aiming that bulb towards the side. So when I say I have to aim the LED, this is what I mean. It is sticking sideways out of the housing. And I'm about to show you why. Well, actually I already have shown you why, but I'm about to show you what aiming this LED that direction does in this housing. The LED is facing directly into the distributor. And now, you get to see what that does for lighting. With the buttons off, because it's a little bit more visible that way. And now, as you can see, the light is being pretty well distributed from that blue LED right there. Around the corners and up to where they need to go. Now, we get to find out if it makes the buttons light up halfway decently. Yep, that doesn't look half bad at all. Let's see what it looks like in the dark. Oh yeah, it's distributing quite well. Alright, so I'm coming out here now to put resistors in the doors. I have already put the LED into this housing, so the wiring harness is disconnected to the LED right now, which is right here. Now what I'm going to do is cut this brown wire here and insert this little resistor which is obviously a 470 ohm resistor and then well this is going to get slid onto the wire beforehand it's heat shrink and that is how I do it and I will be right back to let him bring wire cutters with me okay wire cutters have been gotten so now I can do this Snip. Oh no, I have cut the wire. And now I'm going to strip it back and put the resistor in line with it. Once I cut this short enough. So that's what we got. And that will get soldered together. And then the heat shrink, which is down here, will get pulled over the top of it and shrunk. And that's the way she looks. Pretty darn good if I do say so myself and it's not even warm anymore. And now we can plug it in and give her a quick little test. All right. And the cool thing is it's actually dark enough out here you can actually see the lights. And they look pretty darn good I gotta say. So now stick that in there and move on to the driver's side. Now, as I mentioned before, I had to put this switch in place so I could actually use my doors while I went out driving today. Because all three 
of the lights in, well, actually all four of the lights in here are LED now. So, this switch got used and it actually has still good bulbs in it as could be noticed. Yeah, you can see, they're still good. But now I'm going to pull this switch out and then I'm going to cut the wire next to the orange wire here and that brownish wire next to the orange wire and that brown wire that's kind of sticking out away from the rest which is good because that's where I need it. Let's get to it. Ha uh, frickin' ha. Uh. That mosquito didn't make it. Neither did that one. Well, unfortunately, I screwed up on doing this one, so I'm just going to have to put electrical tape on the rest of it. That's what I get for putting it on the short wire and holding the iron on it too long. It melted before it had the chance to be pulled over the resistor. So I had to shorten it, and now it's too short. So that's just great. This one, on the other hand, came out great. Just fantastic. So now I can pull those switches off, as in this whole unit right here. Just pull the whole thing off. And put this guy in place and see how she works. Shoot, it's almost to where you wouldn't even know it was there. 
if you didn't know what to look for. <laughs> all right, get all this stuff back in here. Not super bright by any means, but bright enough to see at night, which it almost is. So now the only thing left in here to do is this headlight switch right here. Oh, and uh, that one's going to be very interesting because the bulb gets its power straight from the housing. So uh, we're gonna have to figure that one out. I got all these done. Got these done now. The radio's been done since I did that in the Blazer in 2007 or 8. I gotta pull the HVAC cluster 74 bulbs out and replace them again because the super bright LED 74s don't like to work for very long. The tape deck is done. These guys are white LED. And these two map lights are. Why isn't that one working? That's weird was fine before. Well, I fixed the problem with that right quick. Now they both work. But this light is the only other incandescent in this truck, which I am eventually going to replace with probably a panel of LEDs instead of just another festoon bulb. So, and that one of course over there. And my glue light, that's a white. And of course all my other dome lights are white. Under there, and over there. And the 4x4 down here, of course, in LED. I think I might have mentioned it before, but maybe not. Then four-wheel drive, pull the lever, and now I got red four-wheel drive. Really cool. <laughs> Get a screw in the actuator. And then we can take it out of four wheel. So there we go. Blah 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 bl